Even though Android 16 has been out for a little while now, I think we can all accept deep down that this QPR1 update was the real full version of Android 16 we were truly expecting from the start. And thankfully, it is now formally released. And while we did do a crazy long 30 minute deep dive on this update, which you should definitely check out by the way, I wanted to follow up with a clean, short, sweet, and to the point video covering all the biggest changes you need to know about. Visually, this is a huge update that helps flesh out the material you design language and functionally there are a handful of powerful additions too starting with the visual changes there are a ton to go over so we're gonna rapid fire through them real quick for one the wallpaper and style page has been completely redesigned it now has a new layout new animations, and in general, a much cleaner, more user-friendly flow. We have new additions like an effects panel where you can add a custom shape to the main subject of a photo for emphasis. There's also new weather effects that add subtle animations to your wallpaper on both your lock screen and home screen to match local weather patterns like fog, rain, snow, or sun. Personally, this is one of my favorite new additions as it adds a lot of character to the home screen, and I'm really glad to see Google implement things like this in Pixel UI. On top of that, the lock screen shortcut select is now also more simplified with a grid view now instead of that old spinning list. And finally, there is a suggested photo carousel that pulls from your on-device gallery to use as a wallpaper with a slick little animation to match. But that is not all, as pretty much every other aspect of the operating system has been redesigned to some degree. The settings app as a whole has had a complete makeover, for example, as it now sports a more colorful and modern look. Each section now has a unique circular icon with a pastel shade to clearly define it. Some sections have greater separation to help you navigate with detached areas that have little mini headers and deeper options appearing in tabbed floating panes. And the spacing as a whole has been increased with more padding in between different sections for a cleaner look. Another big change is with the quick settings panel redesign. As a whole, it has a new look now with these frosted blurred background, rectangles with rounded corners, and a redesigned brightness bar. Functionally, there are some new additions too. We can now have resizable tiles that you can format into either two by one sizes or a one by one size, allowing you to mix and match them to whatever works best for your needs. And if you resize them into one by one icons, certain tiles will become single tap shortcuts to activate the feature instead of opening a sub menu, which is a fantastic quality of life change. Although on some of these, you can still long press to access that sub menu if needed. There's also been a pretty decent change to the volume sliders and volume panels. Pressing the volume buttons will now present you with a sleeve sleeker, more rectangular slider inside of a pill-shaped pop-up. The icons for the mute, vibrate, and sound will now use a mix of circles and squares for a more modern look, and for the panel itself, it's slightly bigger and features right-aligned icons, and the individual sliders for different audio sources are updated as well for a cleaner feel. On top of that, we get a ton of nice new animations, like when you're playing music or a video, an animated sound wave will appear at the bottom of the slider, which is a really nice touch. Continuing with the biggest changes, you'll notice that notifications in general have been redesigned. For the most part, elements have shifted around so the individual notification panes are larger in most cases, and colors and app icons are way more visible now. There are now new, smoother animations that have this sticky element to them, where they kind of drag the surrounding notifications along with the one you're swiping away, and there's new functionality here as well, like a larger, way more obvious clear all button, and you have quick shortcuts at the bottom of your notification shade for history and various settings. And finally, long pressing a notification will also now show cleaner, more visible options for dismissing them, turning them off, or making them silent. Lastly, for the final major redesigned element, the recent app screen has seen a few changes as well. In the past, we got simplified icons that appeared on top of each app card, but with the new QPR update, they've been replaced with integrated app menus. This should help make it more obvious that there are action changes that can be made here. So tapping on the drop down will allow you to access further controls like split screen, app information, and more. And below the recent app card, the screenshot and select tools are now housed in these material three style buttons to make them more prominent. Now, to round this video out, there are a small handful of actual features that we can go over real quick. Probably the biggest one here is the most official version of a desktop mode we've seen so far from Pixel, which works similarly in concept to Samsung Dex, where you 
plug in your phone into an external monitor to get enhanced app windowing capabilities. This is available on the Pixel 8 and newer, and while it's technically still a developer option you have to enable in the settings, it's a great addition to play around with nonetheless. In order to actually use this feature, you will need a spare monitor, keyboard, and mouse, but you will also need some kind of HDMI to USB-C adapter. In this case, I'm using a 6-in-1 adapter from Anchor, which I will link in the description. As a whole, I would say the desktop mode is very basic right now. The entire interface does resemble Chrome OS with a taskbar at the bottom with your docked apps. You can also window those apps by either dragging them to the left and right edges of your screen or by hovering your mouse over the maximize icon and selecting which side you want your app on. And funny enough, you can technically do a bit of gaming too. I did try Minecraft with a keyboard and mouse and while there were some performance issues, the thought of being able to plug my Pixel directly into an external setup to play my games is really cool. Overall, it's still a massive work in progress, and it's not complete by any stretch of the imagination. The resolution is a bit low, so icons can be blurry and pixelated. The notifications and quick settings panels are not functional yet, and it still does have a long way to go. But I'm really happy to see it here, and I can't wait to see what the more finalized version looks like. Another interesting addition is a new option called Check Enrolled Fingerprints. The function is self-explanatory to be fair, but if you have multiple fingerprints enrolled, you can now check which saved entry corresponds to which finger. So in this case, I have four fingerprints registered and I can scan my thumb to see exactly which one my phone recognizes. It's more of a quality of life feature than anything else, but definitely a much needed one. And the last major feature I wanted to cover is the formal addition of audio sharing. Technically, this feature has been coming and going for a few betas now, showing up in early versions of Android 15 and Android 16 before disappearing at random, but it officially returns with this quarterly platform release. Basically, this feature works through Bluetooth's AuraCast function. It will allow you to broadcast your phone's media so other people with their own LE audio headphones can listen along with you. And you can also connect to AuraCast broadcast from other nearby users or public sources. You can find this under the settings, then connected devices, then connection preferences tab if you want to check it out for yourself. And that, my friends, covers the biggest improvements to Pixel devices in the brand new Android 16 QPRI1 update. As I said in my intro, this seems like the real version of Android that Google wanted to ship in the first place, bringing a fresh new look and some genuinely powerful new features to the table. There's definitely a lot to enjoy and a lot to play around with. So with that said, what is your favorite new feature or design change in this update? And on top of that, are you excited about the future of desktop mode on Pixel devices? And is there anything you were hoping to see that did not make it this time around? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below as myself and the rest of the Android community would love to hear what you guys are thinking. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd from 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.